Welcome back to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. We're moving to our first major conversation for today, and that is, uh, uh, well, from the 12th colloquium um, yesterday, the Bola Tinubu colloquium, with the theme, Our Common Bond, Our Common Wealth. Uh, President Mamadou Buhari, who was the chairman of education, of course, uh, gave his uh, uh, speech, made certain statements that we are discussing this morning. Nigeria is at a point where few groups are agitating for secession. There is the indigenous people of Biafra, which wants its own state. And lately, there have been images of uh, uh, images rather depicting a currency and a flag for a Yoruba nation. In all of this, President Mohamed Buhari says Nigerians are better together. The president, of course, was speaking at the 69th birthday colloquium of uh, APC's national leader, Bola Tinubu. Uh, we're speaking this morning with Reverend Dapo Daramala, who is also a public affairs analyst. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Good morning to you, sir. It's my pleasure to be with you this morning. All right. Uh, so there have been various reactions to the president's statement. Uh, we would like to start by hearing yours. It's not the first time President Mohamed Bouhari is uh, making a similar statement, uh, speaking on Nigeria's unity and how we are a lot better as one indivisible nation. Uh, do you agree with you know the president here? And um, what's your reaction to it? Okay, uh, first let me um, use your platform, I guess, um, since you were speaking about the fallout of a colloquium uh, that was set up for uh, Ashiwa Jibola to say happy 69th birthday to, to him. Um, I will wish him all the best. Uh, let me say the comment you just, uh, what, what just asked of me is very clear. Um, what exactly is the problem of Nigeria? Is there our unity, as some people are saying, or is the lack of restructuring, as some are saying? And I think we are, we are missing the point. The biggest challenge before Nigeria is corrupt. So I'm not one of those who believe that we go our separate way, and all these uh, people who are banding uh, different regional agenda around uh, is what we know best for. Because even when you split into smaller groups, are we not going to have our issues? Are you telling me that the Steve man and the Doma man are friends? Are you saying the Ife man and the Modakeke man are friends? We've seen the Umuleri and the Abuleri problem. So it, is, it can be domesticated. It, it goes down the line. So the issue for me is not about our being together today. So for me, it's okay. There is, there is strength in diversity. I mean, even in America, even in England, there are, there are, there are so many, you know, um, call them, I don't want to use the word ethnic, but ethnic minorities are there. There are different groups within that system. What we need to further, I mean, bother ourselves about is how will corruption not destroy Nigeria? So for me, because of the strength in, in our diversity, this together should be a plus. It should be a plus for us. But what, what, is, what is the critical problem here? It is corruption. Let me give you an example. If you go to the Senate today, or the National Assembly in general, you have different people, over 109 people in the Senate, over almost 400 in the, in the, in the, in the House of Representatives. They come from different geopolitical zones. They come from different ethnic backgrounds. But when it comes to when it comes to looting this country and, and, and you know everybody comes together, they don't remember where they come from. So why is it you know on the flip side we begin to say that uh, being together is a problem when when they want to share the loot, nobody remembers this one is a Hausa man or a Fulani man or a Yoruba man or an Igbo man. Everybody comes together to share the loot. So what I'm saying is very easy, is that we must... Okay, I'll give an example. We are talking about a national assembly that when you ask them to tell you how much they are getting on a monthly basis, number one is salary, they will tell you go to the revenue and fiscal or whatever commission that they fix, that they fix their salary. So why can't they tell us? Why can't the Igbo man be the Yoruba man? Why can't the House of Lali man be the Yoruba man? So that tells me that the political class in this nation, the elite in this nation, when it comes to stealing our funds and protecting themselves, 
they don't remember they come from they come from different geopolitical zones. But when it comes to other issues, it is when you remember that they come from different divides. Okay. So for me, the president is right, or whoever, you know, even the vice president, you know, everybody who spoke yesterday, they spoke very well. Even Bola Sinubu himself, who says that uh, being together is the best option that we have, well, maybe yes. But all of them should confess that, and they must agree to the fact that they have been fully destroyed this country by the, the acts of corruption that they have entrenched, not minding the political class that they belong to not minding the parties they belong to, not minding the geopolitical zone that they belong to. Like I said, for me, when it comes to stealing, authority stealing, like I said, it is a common front. All right, Mr. Daramala. So, that, that would be my position. Mr. Daramala, still talking yes. about this issue, you know, of national unity and inclusion, we see that, you know, in these months and years that are leading up to the big day, the 2023 presidential election, some groups have been agitating for the presidency to be zoned, you know, to their regions. Do you think that if maybe the South, you know, gets what they, what they want regarding zoning of the presidency, it might go a long way to creating, you know, more national cohesion because they would feel, you know, have a sense of belonging and inclusion, so to speak. Oh, no, most definitely. You remember that that was a sentiment that uh, drove a, a lot of us to vote for, some of us who voted for Jonathan. That was what we did. Not minding that it was TPP platform. Some of us remember that, okay, let it come to the South. I mean, for eight years, about some sort of Southwestern was the president of this country. And so we have, we, the South had their own fair share. It came to the Southwest. When they went back to the North, Whoever, whoever they came up with in, the, in Castina, I mean, a, 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 a northern, somebody from the northern, northern part of the country also ruled. Now, Buhari has come, and Buhari has done APS. I mean, supposedly he will do APS. I mean, God will it anyway, else and all that. So, I mean, it's only right that he's coming back to the south. Now, the other part of the south will say, ah, Yoruba has done it for eight years and the southwest. The South South has done it for about six years under this new dispensation. So ideally, I am one of those who believe that the, 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 the presidency of this country should go to the South East. Okay. Because if it's coming back to the South, they are the people who have not produced the president. So some of my friends who, who will belong to the same think tank and, and the same political and geological family, they believe that the Igbos will never put, put their house in order and we never get the act right. All right. But for me, for the sake of for the sake of fairness and, and transparency and, and you know a sense of justice, I think the Southeast must be preparing themselves now to to do nothing but you know produce the next president of this country. Okay. Some so, of us uh, Mr. We throw our work behind th th that you know political move. Mr. Daramola, um, aside the um, uh, political angles, and of course, you know, you've mentioned corruption and selfish um, interests as one of the reasons, you know, why, um, you know, our unity may have also, you know, had its own challenges. And of course, you also mentioned politicians are only thinking about themselves. Um, but I want you to react to those who are clamoring for um, secession, those who are clamoring for a breakup so that they can, of course, be able to, uh, uh, well, for self-determination. Um, would you say that there is beauty in our, our diversity? There is, um, it, it's a lot better if we are united and continue to grow as one indivisible nation. Um, and the only challenge we have really is the fact that we've, we've, not, we've not had a government that is able to um, you know, push that beauty and, of course, you know, you know, express uh, unity and justice and fairness to all. Do you agree you know, with that? Or would you say so that maybe me, those who, call it, who are calling for secession are right? No, for, for me, number one, those uh, who call them secessionists, um, those clamoring for secession, they are political, they are political uh, uh, corrupt, corrupt elements. I mean, uh, all of them from, okay, I'll give an example. See what is going on with, so let's start with OPC. When office started, they said they had a, they had a regional agenda.
today, what has OPC achieved in the Southwest? I mean, we should ask ourselves that question. You discovered that at the end of the day, what happened was that they, they, they went their separate ways before, before Dr. Fassel would die. And today, what is the story? All they were clamoring for was economic self, self economic empowerment. All they wanted was to, to man the pipeline. All, all pipeline security both was what they wanted. And that's what is going on today. So tell me, what regional agenda is that? Is that a collective interest or is that the interest of some people? I spoke today. What is the agenda? All you are saying is that they are, they are developing militant states and rights and they are just a repeat, a repeat of what you know we saw in, in, in the Niger Delta. Went to follow, collected money from Jonathan. How much of that money did he plow to Baramachu? Or all, all these people there, how much of that money? Billions of naira that he collected. The same with Atari Kubo, all of them. All the money they are collecting from their militants and the recognition they got eventually. How did, they, how did that better the lives of their own people? You see, when you see people who are clamoring for all these things, everybody is just fighting for themselves. And that's why I don't take them seriously because they are jokers. You also well, happen in the case of IPOP. Yeah. Even the British, I mean, the, the, the IPOP in England, you can see what is going on between them, all because of money. So, aside asides so the. So, all those people talking about sensation. Yes. They are, they are fighting for their own pockets, number one. All right, so aside the, Number two. the 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 motive, because you've clearly said the motive of the leadership of these secessionist groups um, is questionable. Um, but you know, do they do they That's have right. but do they have any strong points, you know, with you know the, the what they're clamoring for? Do you agree in any no, way that the country maybe is not working as one indivisible nation? Um That's aside right. the I'm leadership. telling you that our unity is not our problem. Or the way the country is structured right now is not a problem. The problem is that, okay, let me ask you. A, gov a governor in Delta State or a governor in Lagos State who is generating so much money or a governor in River State who is collecting so much money from, from this all the diversion and all of that. How much of that are they plunged into their own state? Is it not the same governor who are fighting Buhari now for creating financial autonomy for local government. So when you look at everybody down the line, people are just simply corrupt. People are just simply inept. They are not creative. They have not used technology to drive, you know, the economic survival and revival of their state. That is the problem. So we should not be, we should not, we should not get, you know, mixed up in this old noise of uh, restructuring and all these things. Let those governors go and give liberty or liberation to those local government chairmen and stop paying them salary. They are first years of government. They are not an appendix of the state. So if restructuring must start, let it begin at that level. If oh. economic restructuring must start, let each state develop, develop their agricultural you know, uh, uh, experience in, in all the states and create jobs. Mr. Darmala. That is the restructuring we need. Mr. Darmala, to, to be honest, the, the, the diversity in our country is a beauty that we can definitely harness. But it seems that it's something we've been getting wrong. And rather than pull us together, it seems that, you know, different leaders or leadership styles just seem to make people have an opinion that, you know, this president is for this part of the country or this president is for his people and his people alone. What kind of a leader then going forward in 2023, you know, looking beyond, you know, party zoning, looking beyond, you know, party affiliations, what kind of a leader would you say Nigeria needs that would bring everybody the to one center, one focus and drive us towards unity? The kind of leadership we, 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 we should be looking at is not achievable at this time. And I will explain. Our politics is driven not by ideology, not by the people. It is driven by money. The larger your pocket, the more chance you have of becoming a political, I mean, sorry, a, 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 whether a bachelor or a chairman of the local government 
or a senator or House of Rep member or a governor or a president or whatever. So primarily, that is what drives our policy. It is not ideology. It is not that you can people can people the people can determine who they want just on that on that level. People end up following what the political elite in their communities where they lead them. And we know where they lead them. It is stomach infrastructure. I'll give an example. Buhari has been a popular politician all, all his life. More, I mean, since he began to contest for election. But at what point did he become the president? At the point where people like Bola Chinubu, Rochini Ameti, Bukola Saraki, all these same elements, they put their resources together and they made Buhari what he is today. And that is why you can see that in some areas, his, his hands are tied. So that is the nature of the politics we are still playing today. We all know, we all know what an ideal leader, a political leader should look like. We know that he should be thinking about building hospitals for his people, building good roads for his people, doing right. what is needed to make his people have a better life. The basics are there, and we know what we should do. But we cannot do them because the political class is corrupt. Okay. And the followership Reverend is solid. So those are the primary challenges that we have. And until we fix that mentality, until we defeat this monster, cause corruption in, that is endemic in our country, all this noise about uh, let's respect all, let's go our separate ways and all that, is just a, it's just a waste of All right, Reverend Daramola, the conversation on Nigeria's unity is you know, extremely important, and we hope that we can continue to talk about these things until... Uh, we, of course, are in a better place as a, as a nation. Thank you very much for your time Thank and for you. sharing your views with us this morning. It's been my pleasure. All right. Good morning to you. If you're just uh, joining us here on The Breakfast, uh, of course, it's here on Plus TV Africa. We're moving now to talk about NAVDAC. And fake vaccines, fake diabetes drugs after the break.